Hi everyone, and welcome back. Today I'll be reading chapter 27 and 28 out of Holes. Chapter 27 starts on page 116. Stanley dug his shovel into the ground. His shovel was about three and a half feet deep in the center. He grunted as, as he pried up some dirt, then flung it off the side. The sun was almost directly overhead. He glanced at his canteen lying beside his hole. He knew it was half full, but he didn't take a drink just yet. He had to drink spar sparingly because he didn't know who would be driving the water truck the next time it came. Three days had passed since the warden had scratched Mr. Sir. Every time Mr. Sir delivered water, he poured Stanley's straight onto the ground. Fortunately, Mr. Pandensky delivered the water more often than Mr. Sir. Mr. Pandensky was obviously aware of what Mr. Sir was doing because he always gave Stanley a little extra. He'd fill Stanley's canteen, then let Stanley take a long drink, then top it off for him. It helped too that Zero was digging some of Stanley's hole for him. Although, as Stanley had expected, the other boys didn't seem didn't like to see Stanley sitting around while they were working. They'd say things like, who died and made you king? Or, it must be nice to have your own personal slave. When he tried pointing out that he was the one who took the blame for the sunflower seeds, the other boys said it was his fault because he was the one who spilled them. I risk my life for those seeds, Magnet had said, and all I got was one lousy handful. Stanley had also tried to explain that he needed to save his energy so he could teach Zero how to read, but the other boys just mocked him. Same old story, ain't it, Armpit? X-Ray had said. The white boy sits around while the black boy does all the work. Ain't that right, caveman? No, that's not right, Stanley replied. No, it ain't, X-Ray agreed. It ain't right at all. Stanley dug out another shovel full of dirt. He knew X-Ray wouldn't have been talking like that if he was the one teaching Zero to read. Then X-Ray would be talking about how important it was that he got his rest, right? So he could be a better teacher, right? And that was true. He did need to save his strength so he could be a better teacher, although Zero was a quick learner. Sometimes, in fact, Stanley hoped the warden was watching them with, his, with her secret cameras and microphones so she'd see, so she'd know that Zero wasn't as stupid as everyone thought. From across the lake, he could see the approaching dust cloud. He took a drink from his canteen, then waited to see who was driving the truck. The swelling on Mr. Sir's face had gone down, but it was still a little puffy. There had been three scratch marks down his cheek. There, two of them had faded, but the middle one, but the middle one must have been the deepest because it still remained. It, it was a jagged purple line running from below his eye to his mouth, like a tattoo of a scar. Stanley waited in line, then handed him his canteen. Mr. Sir held it up to his ear and shook it. He smiled at the swirling sound. Stanley hoped he wouldn't dump it out. To his surprise, Mr. Sir held the canteen under the stream of water and filled it. Wait here, he said. Still holding Stanley's canteen, Mr. Sir walked past him and then around the side of the truck and into the cab where he couldn't see. What's he doing in there? asked Zero. I wish I knew, said Stanley. A short while later, Mr. Sir came out of the truck and handed Stanley his canteen. It was full. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Mr. Sir smiled at him. What are you waiting for? He asked. Drink up. He popped some sunflower seeds into his mouth, chewed and spit out the shells. Stanley was afraid to drink it. He, he hated to think what kind of vile substance Mr. Sir might have put in it. He brought the canteen back to the hole. For a long time, he left it beside his hole as he continued to dig. Then, when he was so thirsty that he could hardly stand it anymore, he unscrewed the cap, turned the canteen over, and poured it all out onto the dirt. 
He was afraid that if he waited another second, he might have taken a drink. After Stanley taught Zero the final six letters of the alphabet, he taught him how to write his name. Capital Z E R O. Zero wrote the letters as Stanley said them. Zero, he said, looking at his piece of paper. His smile was too big for his face. Stanley watched him write it over and over again. Zero, 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 zero. In a way, it made him sad. He couldn't help but think that a hundred times zero was still nothing. You know, that's not my real name, Zero said as they headed to the rec room for dinner. Well, yeah, Stanley said. I guess I knew that. He had never really been sure. Everyone's always called me Zero, even before I came here. Oh, okay. My name, my real name is Hector. Hector, Stanley replied. Hector Zeroni. Chapter 28. After 20 years, Cape Barlow returned to Green Lake. It was a place where nobody would ever find her, a ghost town, on a ghost lake. The peach trees had all died, but there were a couple of small oak trees still growing by an old abandoned cabin. The cabin used to be on the eastern shore of the lake. Now, the edge of the lake was over five miles away, and it was little more than a pond full of dirty water. She lived in the cabin. Sometimes she could hear Sam's voice echoing across the emptiness. Onions! Sweet, fresh onions! She knew she was crazy. She knew she'd been crazy for the last 20 years. Oh, Sam, she would say, speaking to him into the vast emptiness. I know it is hot, but I feel so very cold. My hands are cold, my feet are cold, my face is cold, and my heart is cold. And sometimes she would hear him say, I can fix that. And she'd feel his warm arm across her shoulders. She'd been living in that cabin about three months when she awakened one morning by someone kicking open the cabin door. She opened her eyes to see the blurry end of a rifle, two inches from her nose. She could smell Trout Walker's dirty feet. You've got exactly 10 seconds to tell me where you've hidden the loot, said Trout, or else I'll blow your head off. She yawned. <sighs> A red-headed woman was there with Trout. Kate could see her rummaging through the cabin, dumping drawers and knocking things from the shelves of cabinets. The woman came to her. Where is it? She demanded. Linda Miller? Asked Kate. Is that you? Linda Miller had been in her fourth grade class when Kate Barlow was still a teacher. She had been a cut, cute, fre freckled face girl with the beautiful red hair. Now her face was blotchy and her hair was dirty and scraggly. It's Linda Walker, said Trout. Oh, Linda, I'm so sorry, said Kate. Trout jabbed her throat with the rifle. Where's the loot? There is no loot, said Kate. Don't give me that, shouted Trout. You've robbed every bank from here to Houston. You better tell him, said Linda. We're desperate. You married him for money didn't you? asked Kate. Linda nodded. But it's all gone, dried up with the lake, the peach trees, the livestock. I kept thinking it has to rain soon. The drought can't last forever. But it just kept getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Her eyes fixed on the shovel, which was leaning up against the fireplace. She's buried it, she declared. I don't know what you're talking about said Kate. There was a loud blast as, Trout's fire, as Trout fired his rifle just above her head. The window behind her shattered. Where's it buried? He demanded. Go ahead and kill me, said, Tr said Kate. But I sure hope you like to dig, cause you're gonna be digging for a long time. It's a big, vast wasteland out there. You and your children and their children can dig for the next hundred years and you'll never find it. Linda grabbed Kate's hair and jerked her head back. 
Oh, we're not gonna kill you, she said, but by the time we're finished with you, you're gonna wish you were dead. I've been wishing I was dead for the last 20 years, said Kate. They dragged her out of bed and pushed her outside. She wore blue silk pajamas. Her turquoise studded black boots remained beside her bed. They loosely tied her legs together so she could walk, but she couldn't run. They made her walk barefoot on the hot ground. They wouldn't let her stop walking. Not until you take us to the loot, said Trout. Linda hit Kate on the back of her legs with the shovel. You're going to take us to it sooner or later, so you might as well make it sooner. She walked one way, then the other, until her feet were black and blistered. Whenever she stopped, Linda whacked her with the shovel. I'm losing my patience, warned Trout. She felt the shovel jab into her back, and she fell onto hard dirt. Get up, ordered Linda. Kate struggled to her feet. We're being easy on you today, said Trout. It's just gonna keep getting worse and worse until you take us to it. Look out, shouted Linda. A lizard leaped toward Kate. Kate could see its big red eyes. Linda tried to hit it with the shovel and Trout shot at it, but they both missed. The lizard landed on Kate's bare ankle. Its sharp black teeth bit into her leg. Its white tongue lapped up the droplets of blood that leaked out of the wound. Kate smiled. There was nothing they could do to her any more. Start digging, she said. Where is it? Kate screeched. Where'd you bury it? demanded Trout. Kate Barlow died laughing. And that's the end of chapter 28. Now we're on to part two, the last hole. Now you have to wait till next time. Don't forget to check Google Classroom for the assignments. All right, until next time, everyone. Bye.